Good evening everyone, I'm writer coach Tony and tonight I'm going to answer a question posed by one of my uh, one of the people who was able to uh, access my vlog. No? Her name is Maria Erlinda Belhira and she was asking um, what's the difference between quantitative and qualitative research? Um, so when you're doing a thesis um, you'll be choosing uh, one of the two methods you can choose is either quantitative or qualitative uh, methodology so when you do quantitative uh, it just means that you are um, using statistics now you'll be using statistical formulas uh, and to be able to use that you have to uh, design a questionnaire so the questionnaire can either be a questionnaire that's already been used before by other researchers uh, that would make your life easier because it's already validated uh, and it has been used in other studies but uh, for most of my students they had they had to do their own questionnaires uh, because uh, their their research topics are so specific to a certain uh, subject that they have to do their own questionnaires which is fine uh, I have a vlog there which discusses how to make a questionnaire. I hope it can help you. Um, but for quantitative research, you need to have a questionnaire where you ask um, a group of respondents to answer. So usually for quantitative research, there is a large number of respondents, no? maybe from, I don't know, 50 to 1,000 to 2,000. So the numbers would differ depending on the population of your study. If you have a big population, uh, most likely you should have a bigger sample. But since uh, most of you are in school and doing your studies, um, the usual sampling would be at most maybe 100, uh, 500, not so many because um, the problem is you don't, you may not have the time to to do the analysis of the, of the study, of the results, if your population sample is very big. So again, for quantitative analysis, um, you have this survey questionnaire you give to a respondent, and then let's say there are 500 respondents, you have to tabulate all the raw data, all the questions there, whatever they answered, and then you will use statistics. So for quantitative analysis, you use statistics, they use numbers. Uh, in other words, your, your research has the mathematics to back it up. That's why many students use quantitative studies. So for uh, some statistical formulas they use, they use um, t-test, they use ANOVA, they use multiple regression, uh, they use um, correlation. So it will really depend on what you want to do. Um, I'll be discussing those statistical formulas in another discussion, but what I'm saying here is that for quantitative analysis, you'll be using mathematics. You'll be using statistics as a way to find the results of your study. Uh, when do you use it? For example, um, let's see. You want to find out the uh, what affects the academic performance of grade 4 students. So let's say you want to find out if it's IQ, if, it's, um, if the parents are are active in 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 school or let's say um, what else the social the social background of the student no let's say mayaman yung middle class mayaman or comes from the poor uh, social stratum and let's say number four um, access to internet no so you can have, have all those four, four variables and then you can find out whether which of those four affects the academic performance of the students. So a good way to find out, find that out is to use quantitative analysis. So because through, through statistics, the formulas will tell you which of the four uh, has an effect on the academic performance of students. So that's just one example. There are many, many other examples um, that you can apply it on. But what I'm saying is, if you want to com find out if this variable affects this variable, quantitative analysis is what you can do.
So that's that's for one that's for one side. The other side is qualitative analysis. Uh, qualitative analysis um, is either you depend on uh, uh, previous studies, no? So in other words, uh, in quantitative analysis kasi, you use primary data. When I say primary data, ikaw mismo ang kumuha ng data, no? You got the results directly from people. Uh, however, uh, some researchers also use uh, secondary data. So secondary data, it's usually used when you want... Um, uh, secondary data kasi is studies that have been done before. So you, you, uh, secondary data is studies that have been done before so um, you want to do that especially if you want um, time studies no? your longitudinal studies let's say you want to know the performance of the GDP of the Philippines between 1960 to year 2000 uh, let's say nothing sorry 1980 to 2020 so that's when you use um, longitudinal studies for um, what do you call that? Uh, secondary data um, because you want a, a long period no? so that means you need all the studies from 1980 to 2020 so because normally you have to pour through I don't know 600 700 studies and not all of those are relevant to your study Maybe only 15, maybe only 30. So, matrabaho siya. Um, quantitative analysis is actually medyo matrabaho because you have to uh, look for your specific respondent. And But what I like about it is it's um, it's more in-depth. No? Because the problem with quantitative, um, kung ano lang na sa survey, yun lang ang masasagot. No? What's on the survey is the only thing the respondent can answer but in qualitative studies since you're doing the interview yourself you can pose probing questions no? let's say you can ask um, um, what's the IQ of your son so they need the IQ um, then you can ask uh, what are his study habits no? or are her parents his are his or her parents there living with him or are they OFW so in other words uh, in qualitative studies, you can ask probing questions uh, which you cannot do in quantitative studies. That's why uh, most nursing studies, uh, even education studies, they use qualitative because they can really do the interviews. Um, this only suggested though, if your topic is very specific, you know, let's say you're doing studies on maybe autistic children, and let's say a specific type of autism uh, our population is only let's say 300 all over the Philippines so I suggest instead of using quantitative but qualitative because out of 300, 300 population you can interview maybe do a case study of 5 people of 5, of five autistic children and from that you can either observe them camera them, interview them and from whatever you get you can already answer your statement of the problem. In other words, to put it simply, for qualitative study, you're doing interviews, actual interviews. No? For example, you're doing studies on CEOs of the Philippines. Um, Siyempre, mahinap mag, mag, mag set an appointment with CEOs. It's not that easy. And most of them are so busy, you cannot give them a survey questionnaire for them to answer. So the best way to do the study is through qualitative study. You interview the lang siguro maybe the top three CEOs that you can find and pray to God that they will give you a grant you an interview you know, because they are very busy people but through qualitative studies you can do it because um, you can only concentrate on a certain uh, aspect of being a CEO no? or let's say what makes him a leader since CEOs are not so many uh, it would be good if you use qualitative study and then it will also give you the chance to really talk to the person, um, dig deeper, and then when you analyze it, um, you can compare whatever all the three CEOs said, no? or whatever the these autistic children said. No, so I'll make another video for that on how to do qualitative analysis. But for now, 
That's basically the difference between quantitative and qualitative. Pag quantitative, pag quantitative may mathematics, may statistics, may survey questionnaire, and malaki yung sample, no? Maybe, for me, dapat at least 100 ang sample mo, 100 uh, people ang sasagot sa survey. Um, and you have to give me a good reason why it will, it has to go lower than that. For qualitative naman, it's all interview, all chika-chika. Uh, it looks easy, but actually it's not. Kasi, um, it's usually case studies, eh. Like, uh, you observe these autistic children, or you observe a certain tribe, or a certain family. So you have to be very perceptive, very observant. Um, and then, let's say if you have to interview CEOs, mahirap din kasi mag-set ng interviews, no? So, so, ayun, that's why you have to do qualitative. And then, you have to make sure your questions answer perfectly your statement of the problem. Otherwise, wala, no? It's not easy to ask for another interview. So, pag kulang yung, yung output mo, uh, yeah, you're dead, no? So, make sure uh, you... <laughs> You ask your supervisor to check your survey questionnaire, to check your interview questions, to ensure that lahat ng bases are covered by your questions. Another common question is, um, can you combine both quantitative and qualitative methods? Yes. Um, recently, medyo, many of my students are using both quantitative and qualitative studies. Um, because it's more in depth no for example um uh they interview ceos and then they also interview the the let's say the rank and file no for the rank and file they only gave uh the survey questionnaire let's say um uh, employees of this company how are they affected by covid-19 so let's say the company has 300 employees we can give the survey to if you can give it all to the 300 employees, perfect, no? So give it, give it to the 300 employees in a survey form. But for the top heads lang, let's say the managers talaga, maybe let's say there are five top managers, maybe you interview two of them, that will be the qualitative part of your study. The qualitative part of your study will be the survey questionnaire for the employees. So why is it good to use both quantitative and qualitative? If kaya lang naman, ha? if kaya ng time, if kaya ng budget, if kaya ng katawan mo to do both, it would be a stronger study. Because you can compare what the employees are saying, no? Let's say the employees are saying, oh, the bosses are like this, like that. Sabi mo bosses, oh, we are like this, like that. You can make a comparison, no? And find out who's telling the truth or why would they not be telling the truth. So you can uncover more from your study if you use both uh, the quantitative and qualitative uh, methodologies. But as I said, just do it if you have the time, if you have the money, if you have the, you know, the, the energy to do it. Uh, because just doing one type of methodology is already, will make you very busy enough. If you do both pa, then uh, make sh just make sure it's feasible. No? Just make sure matatapos mo siya within the deadline. Because anyway, your goal is to graduate. And, um, <laughs> your goal is to graduate and to finish this study so um, it would be useless if you're making the study too broad or too difficult because it's, it's, it's just a requirement anyway for graduation but at least it will teach you the skills you need uh, for further research and to also contribute to the available research uh, in our country's universities so with that, I hope I was able to answer your question, Maria or Linda. Uh, thank you very much for that question. If you have any more other questions, just feel free to ask me. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, uh, Writer Coach Tony. And um, guys, if you need any help, any questions, any suggestions, you can uh, message me there through my WhatsApp. And under the video, my, my number's done. There's WhatsApp, there's Viber, and there's my email address also. So anyway, I hope to hear from you guys soon. Uh, enjoy your research work. Ingat everyone!